Part 1 of Chemical Detective introduced the concept that when two or more substances come together and a new substance or substances are formed, a chemical change or reaction has occurred. You also learned in Part 1 that there are common clues that indicate the formation of new substances. They include color change, gas production, temperature change, and precipitate formation. Chemical changes are represented by chemical equations. These mathematical models show the number and type of atoms and molecules that are involved in the reaction. A typical chemical equation has the reactants, which are the starting substances, on the left side of the arrow, and the products, which are the ending substances, on the right side of the arrow. The arrow is interchangeable with the word yields so that a chemical reaction such as this one is read as iron added to copper sulfate yields or produces iron sulfate and copper. It is important to remember that the arrow is effectively an equal sign since the law of conservation of matter states the number and type of atoms on the reactant side must equal the number and type of atoms on the product side. The law also means that the total mass of the reactants must equal the total mass of the products. Determining if a chemical equation is balanced, that is, whether or not it obeys the law of conservation of matter, requires counting the number and types of atoms on either side of the arrow. This is accomplished by keeping four simple rules in mind. First, each capital letter represents a new element. I'm drawing a dot under each of the elements represented in these formulas and this equation. So we have hydrogen and oxygen present on either side. Number two, a subscript multiplies only the element immediately preceding it. These small twos that are slightly lower in spacing than the element symbol that, they, that precedes them are subscripts. So this one here multiplies only that O this subscript here multiplies only that H, and so on. A coefficient, which is a large number that precedes a formula, multiplies everything that follows it up until either the end of the equation, a plus sign, or an arrow. So in this case we only have H2O following the coefficient. So that is as if we have, in mathematical terms, 2 times H2O. So that would give me 2 times H2 and 2 times O as well. So let's take all of this together and see if we can determine whether or not this equation is balanced. The first thing I need to do is list the elements on either side of the arrow in the order which they appear on the reactant side. So I have H and I have O. I'm going to copy those elements in exactly the same order as they appear on the reactant side on the product side. Now I'm going to count them up on either side of the equation. So I have, I know, 2 times O, or 2 O's. I have 2 H's but I have a coefficient out front of here, so that's as if I have 2 times H2. So I have a total of 4 H's over here. On the product side, I have 2 H2O molecules. So that means I have 2 times H2 for 4 H's, and 2 times 1 O for 2 O's, and when I compare my reactant side to my product side, I see that they are indeed equal. 
four H's equals four H's, two O's equals two O's. So this is an example of a balanced chemical equation that therefore follows the law of conservation of matter. Let's do a second example. I have to first divide my equation into reactants and products. Then I'm going to list the elements in the order that they appear on the reactant side. So I have zinc, hydrogen, and Cl chlorine. I'm going to copy this list in the same order on the product side. Zinc, H, and chlorine. Now I'm going to count the number of each type of atom. This zinc has no coefficient and no subscript. So that means I have a single zinc atom. I have a coefficient of 2 in front of my HCl. So that means I have 2 times H1, since there's no subscript here, I have 1H, for a total of 2 H's, 2 times Cl, of which there's only 1, for a total of 2 chlorine atoms. And on my product side, I have a single zinc, 2 chlorines, and 2 hydrogens. If I look, I have 1 equals 1, 2 hydrogens equals 2 hydrogens, and 2 chlorine equals 2 chlorines. So I have a balanced chemical equation here as well. In this example, we're going to begin in exactly the same way. I'm a firm believer in routines. So I'm going to list my elements in the order they appear on the reactant side, copy that list, onto the product side. Now I'm going to count up my atoms. So I have 1C. I have 4 H's and 2 O's on my reactant side. And on my product side I have 2 H's I have 1C, and now I have to be careful because I have O's in two different places. I have this O, and I have these two O's for a total of three O's. This is a good example where I have carbons equal, but my hydrogens are not equal nor are my oxygens. So this is not a balanced chemical equation. Another example. I'm going to list my elements. So I look for my capital letters. I have CL, K, and BR. I'm going to copy that list in the same order on the other side. I'm not even looking up here right now. I just simply transfer this list straight on over there. So I have two CLs and I have two Ks and two BRs. Remember this is the same as if it was written like this. Now on my product side, I have again two Ks, two CLs, and two BRs. So this is a balanced equation. And our final example, combining a couple of elements. I'm listing my elements here, C, H and O. I'm counting. So I have four C's, six times H2, or six 
times 2 H's for a total of 12 H's and a single O2 here for 2 oxygens. And on my product side, this time I have a coefficient, which happens to be 2, but I have subscripts as well. So I'm going to write this with parentheses just to make it easier in your mind. Note, reminding me that the 2 multiplies C2 for a total of 4 C's. 2 multiplies H6 for a total of 12 H's. And 2 multiplies O1 for a total of 2 O's. And I have equal number and types on both sides. So I have a balanced equation here. So if you follow these same steps every time, you can easily see whether your equations are balanced and follow the law of conservation of matter or not balanced. Um, the next exercise will be to learn how to balance equations that aren't given to you already that way.